So this was really important because I, one of the problems is all these squares look the same. I want to know where my bottom is. And so I'm going to hold my middle mouse key down, rotate, and right click on the bottom. That's my bottom right there. Okay? And well, I'm not sure where my roofs are, so I'm going to come along here and click on all the roof panels. Well, there's a side panel. That makes sense to me because it looks like a side. The other one is here. There it is right there. And the other side panel, the roof panel, is right there. So I know where my sides are. I know where my bottom is. I'm ready to go ahead and put this map on this thing. Go ahead and hit the A key again. Select everything. And it's time now to, bring, to export this into, a, into an image that we can bring into GIMP. So we're going to go to uh, UVs. See that button down there? Let me bring this down a little bit. UVs, you see that? Okay. Click on that and go to scripts. And so this is why it's so important to have my handout, because that's not intuitive. I mean, OK. I have to be honest with you, that's, that, was not, that is not intuitive. So UVs and scripts. And I can't see it here in the screen, so I'm, I may have to stop this and expand it. Let's try that again. So what you want to do is click on UVs and click on scripts and go to save UV face layout and we'll hit OK on this box right here on the UV exporter box just, just hit OK and then you get the ability to actually put it somewhere I'm going to put it on the desktop go to my desktop I probably accidentally put it in my documents that's why I didn't see it last time and once you've done that you want to give it a name and we'll just keep it as a TGA file but we're going to actually change it into a JPEG coming back. It doesn't matter what the file format is, just one blender can ex recognize. I'll call this my house is. And we're going to come along here and save it. And hopefully it was saved. So now I'm going to go to the desktop and cross my fingers and see if I can find it. And there it is. Actually, it did both of them. I just, there's my house and my house. And it's using a underscore cube because it was created from a cube. So what you want to do right now is come along here and click on Blender. Excuse me. You want to come along now and click on GIMP. So bring up GIMP. So you can go to your Start menu and go to Programs and bring up GIMP. And we're going to import this into GIMP and start editing. And you're going to be amazed at how easy this is. So it really is a simple process, even though there's a lot of steps and there's a few keys in there, but you've, I've written all those keys down for you. And just watch this video over and over again, and uh, it's just it becomes intuitive after a while. So we have had many tutorials on GIMP, so there's no reason for me to go through all the uh, specifics here, but it's just pretty much a file open. So just go to File and hit Open, and navigate to wherever you put your uh, image. Ours is on the desktop. Go to the desktop, and GIMP 2.6 is out now, so that's great because it allows you to do uh, some other things. I look for your image. Mine is my house is. I'll click on that. And here is my image in GIMP. And it's just what I saw before. And now what I'm going to do is actually fairly easy. So I'm going to fill these in and then I'm going to come back and put it back on my house. So let's let's just do it the easy way. I'm going to come over here and start grabbing some tools. We got the fill tool here. See this little container right here? If I click on that right there, I can choose a pattern to fill or I can choose a color. Let's just fill the roof first. It's going to be black. And so we'll just use black. So grab that little paint can. Go to where your roof elements were, if you can remember. And I'm thinking they were here. So I'll just click a black and click a black. So now I have a black roof. OK? You there, Jeff? And now I want to do the sides. So I, I might want to go ahead and do a pine fill. And so here's a little pine fill, so hit fill pattern. And you actually, you can see here, you could most likely add some, if you double click on here, you should be able to see some other patterns. There you go. Single click, thanks, Jeff. And you could probably add some more yourself. So you can actually uh, put some patterns on this house. I'm just going to choose a pine, and we'll make some pine, uh, just some pine uh, structures there. And finally, I'm going to want to uh, do the bottom, which, which you remember was at the very top, and the eaves. So what I'm going to do for the bottom is there's, I think, there's a little Lego fill here. There's a little Lego, so I'll come along and put that Lego fill in for everything else. I believe that's one eave, two eave. I should have four eaves. 
and there they are right there. There's the bottom view. So there it is. I've filled in my uh, structure. Now you can come along here and you can add windows and doors and do more of the texturing and everything, but this is just a basic intro on how you did it. I'm done. All I have to do is go File, Save As. I'm going to turn that into a JPEG, so I'm just going to do it by just basically changing the, the extension here, JPG. Are you there, Jeff? You have the save part? Okay, I'm going to come check on you. So what you want to do now is go ahead and save this figure as a JPEG just by typing in the next extension is .j, .jpg. That's the easiest way. You could actually come down here and, and browse if you wanted to, select a file type. But I just usually just change extension. And uh, over here is the save button. So hit the save button. And I'm just going to ask you about... Go ahead and save button, and that should be saved to your desktop, and let's see if it is. And there's my house is, right there, on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back into Blender. I'm going to click on Blender, and uh, this is the big secret, okay? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to put this texture on the house. And so the way you do that is, and this is all written in the handout, go to Image and go to Open. And then navigate to where your texture is. Ours is in the desktop, so we click on desktop. And we go find our image. And it was a JPEG, so it's my house is. Click on that. And once you do that, hit open image. And when you do that, it should open up like this in Blender. Now I want to say a few things. Depending on what you've done to your image, depending on what you've built it in. It may not line up exactly like this. You can use the G key to uh, arrange this grid. But you have to take a look. See, this grid has to match completely with your image. You could use the S key to shrink it if you needed to, okay? Or you could use the uh, R key to rotate it. So if it wasn't quite right, you can actually use these keys to get that right on there. But you want that grid to lie over your image. And when it does that, you're pretty much done. You want to go back to the uh, your house. And now we're going to follow the procedure I described earlier. We're going to go back to object mode or hit the tab key. And then all you have to do is on this right here, the viewport shader, click textured. And there's your house. And uh, if I hold my mouse, middle mouse down, I can rotate around it or scroll in. There you go. And if, you, and, and if I uh, there you go. You can see underneath there's that Lego color right there. And that's all there is to it. Okay. So at this point, what you want to do, you actually want to uh, render this. Now, if you hit F12 to render it, it doesn't show. So for the rendering process, you have to actually make this a texture and then render it with a texture. But we don't, we're not going to do that because this is enough for us to export this to be used in paper vision. So now we're going to go through the export process.